Here he is, man. Look at that. Such an honor. You guys gotta watch this documentary, I'm telling you. You gotta learn so much. I am not gonna open this. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna seal this in some kind of film. But that's amazing. Thanks, Roger. I'll listen up to what I'm about to tell you just what's up. To those who really doubt of my wish came true, it really ain't no secret. The magic glue, I can, I can, I can, I can. Get ready for this. I can, I can. I believe in me. Listen carefully now, and you really thought I couldn't do it. But let me show you the work and time I really put in. Keeping in mind those who really thought I couldn't do it. I said to myself, I can, I can, I can. Look how play I was a motto I kept telling myself Just to prove to, to those who said I couldn't do it Look at me now and tell me how am I really doing I said to myself I can, I can, I can I can, I can, I'm just gonna fucking do it I can, I can, gonna live my life to the fullest Anything's possible cause I am possible Nothing's impossible with these words I can, I can, I'm credible I'm Everybody, I'm here with Roger Christian uh, in his office. You can see the beautiful poster there, all the nice, nice little uh, Star Wars uh, items. And we got a little something here. Oh, God damn it, look at this. Is it loaded? Is it loaded? Yeah. This? Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Roger, thank you for joining me on my Good channel. To be here. I am really excited to talk to you about some really cool things that you've been doing. Particularly, yes. the galaxy built on hope. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I got my cue cards right here. Sure. Look at, look, look at that bad handwriting. You know, I think they say that's doctor's handwriting. Yeah, you should be a doctor like me. God, God. <laughs> Mine is worse than that. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Okay, hopefully I can read what I wrote here. But, all right, let's go do this. All right, um, Roger, as you know, um, you know, I'm a singer, I'm a musician. Um, along this journey, everything that I've done so far is based on intuition. And it's something that I've, you know, kind of like honed on over a couple of years, just listening to myself in order to do things. My first question to you is, when you were doing all the sets, set dec decorating, the props, everything that you've done, even prior to showing it to George. How much of it was intuition based and, you know, not even worrying about the fact that those props may not be the right thing or, you know, you might have an uncertainty of what the outcome may be. Yeah, it's 100% intuition, 100%. Um, I've done a lot of spiritual training, med meditation training. I mean, a lot of inner work because I was born up British where children are to be seen and not heard mm -hmm. and we're not allowed to show emotions in men so I had to break all of that so <laughs> all of that is to do with opening your intuition and as a even now as a film director you rely on your intuition every minute of the day and you make a wrong choice you go up the wrong path so you have to open that up that's our duty actually that's the hero's journey right that's what we all have to do it's not um, Justin Bieber and, and um, I don't know, Stallone saying, follow your bliss, you'll get right. where I am. That's right. not, that's the wrong messaging. Right. You have to do whatever you feel you love doing to the best of your ability. That's the hero's journey. That is success. Because you've done it and you know better than anyone else Everyone tells you it's wrong, but inside you know it's right. That's the success. That's where it lies, and that's what um, the gut feeling. That's basically yeah. an intuition. Yeah. So it relates to Star Wars, and it relates to the Force, which George took from Chinese Chi, which is the true nature of our inner selves. Right. And as we grow up, it gets polished and tainted and 
perverted, negatives are all coming at you all the time. Our job is to get rid of that. If you can get rid of that, you're back to your pure intuition. So I had to fight the crew. I had to fight, you know, when I first laid my guns out, That the, this one was the second one I ever made for um, Han Solo. The first one was a Stormtrooper's Blaster. I made Chewbacca's weapon. Right. All of these with George four months before the crew started and Fox Green lit the film. Right. Right. My intuition. I did it on my own. I didn't tell George. I didn't tell John Barry. I went to the Baptist gun hire place and made two weapons because I hated science fiction weapons in any movie before. Then nothing was real. Right. I had the idea to adapt beautifully made guns and turn them into a weapon for a Star Wars. So when George came, I phoned him and said, "Come and have a look." Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I say in the documentary, if I was on the wrong trap, I would have been fired. And I that's basically it, what it's going he to, loved yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And we made Princess Leia's gun together. And that set the entire movie for me that my intuition was correct. When I laid my weapons out to the big crew who all came in at EMI, the first assistant director, the big prop on the floor, all of these people standing around, they looked at them, he picked up my gla blaster, threw it at me and said, this is crap. We're making a big science fiction film for a Hollywood director and they went off to get me fired. Wow. That's why I relied on my intuition right the way through. That's why George says, he told Christopher Nolan this, there were only five people stood by his side on Star Wars and I was one of them because I followed my intuition. Yeah. Everything I did, like, you know, I, I would do blasters for stormtroopers. Right. Tuscan Raiders, should they're, they're wild men living in the wilds. They wouldn't have sophisticated weapons. They'd made them themselves, so I chose the gaffy stick. Yeah, it, okay, yeah, that's right. Which is now famous because Boba Fett's right. <laughs> introduction back into the world of Star Wars is killing stormtroopers with my original... Um, Gaffy stick. <clears throat> that no, was an African warrior stick. Right. That that's also that was in the documentary yes. as well. And you know something that really caught my attention too was Robert Watts. He said something really amazing. He said, "Let's start it and allow things to happen." Because you guys were wor working on a budget, right? No and budget. No budget. <laughs> wow. Let me. No budget. And that, like, when he said that, that kind of like related to you know things that I've been doing, like the music video haters. Like, I did not know where to begin, but I ended up just following my own intuition to, to bring out a product, and so have you. Like, this, this is so amazing. I mean, like, guys, if you take a look at this, right, this is... This, so is, this, is, this is a reproduction. It's not the actual one. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, Todd Coyle made this, so he makes these and sells them. They're beautiful. So I've got one for the promo and everything. This is an exact replica of what I made. He's, it's perfectly made. Um based on the weapon here, which was a World War II Mauser, and I show that in the documentary. That's amazing. And I added bits I found that thought made it look like a, a weapon for a sci-fi hero who's called a kind of cowboy-like. And you know, this, is, this was my answer to George, who kept saying, it's a spaghetti western in space. Spaghetti, right. And so, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. That's not loaded, right? I was just like, no, trying to avoid no, it. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, all right, no, what, you know what, guys? Let's just watch the trailer and, um, you know, you guys can have a preview of what that's like, okay? Check it out. George Lucas's Star Wars saga has appealed to four generations of viewers since it launched in 1977. The signature look of the Star Wars used universe is the work of set decorator Roger Christian, working with designer John Barry. How this innovative look was created is revealed for the first time in the new documentary, Galaxy Built on Hope. Roger, you won a well-deserved Academy Award for the creation of the used universe. And it all started with this adapted submachine gun. As set deck, I had to come up with all the weapons. There was no budget to set up a special department to make any of the props or guns. And I thought, you know what, that looks pretty cool. And I, I love the sterling, the look of it. It 
to me it was a science fiction gun as well if it, I'd adapted it correctly. That was my pet peeve, mm -hmm. weapons that felt too light in the actor's hands and they're trying to pretend, and that's heavy. That is very heavy, it feels real. I wanted to find something that would suit a kind of tall, hairy Chewbacca. Star Wars is about taking something real, something timeless, and just giving it a little spin, adding like 10, 20% science fiction to it. I was always intrigued by this fascinating shape, and I wondered about its origins. It's a Fijian to Tokyo Warriors Club. I wanted to do what I always did to everything on Star Wars, add something into it. I was in the ticket office where I had all my graphics cameras, and one day, um, Roger Christian walked in. I brought out a graphics handle. I knew I'd found the Holy Grail. Okay, how do I turn this into what I feel would be a lightsaber? So this is the toolbox. There's his initials, William J. Harmon. The whole of the land speeders and R2-D2 were all made out of this little box in the bits that we found in the studio. So I went round scrounging wood from the other productions that were hanging around. The one in Metropolis only walked forward three paces and George tells me that they wanted it to do a lot more and it, they, it couldn't. Ralph McQuarrie had painted C-3PO with illuminated eyes. This was my biggest problem. I'd come up with this idea of using aeroplane junk and other scrap, I could stick it into the sets and make it work. Roger was highly imaginative in that respect and saved us an awful amount, a huge amount of money. Han Solo's Millennium Falcon felt like a Camaro in some kid's garage. People could identify that. I want to get my car, I want to fix it up, I want to get out of this small town. That's the sentiment that was going on. You added those animals and vehicles outside the cantina entrance. Well, George was always saying that he wanted a spaghetti western in space. John had done a sketch with the bones on the dunes. I found a full-sized fiberglass skeleton of a dinosaur. I had them sent straight down to Tunisia. But we crest the dunes, and I looked down into this valley, and there are the fiberglass dinosaur bones that you left there 20 years earlier. My first piece from David was a piece of nondescript material that was some part of the crate dragon. The Jawas roamed the deserts, picking up anything they could find to repair and sell. The scene was supposed to start with my astromech robot being lowered down from the sand crawler, but it took so long that George started the scene with R2-D2 coming down the ramp. So Roger, one of the things I admire is the fact that you guys cannibalized existing things, making a lightsaber out of a camera parts and the salvage model parts for the Millennium Falcon. What can you illuminate about that? Go back to the very beginning and trace the origins of Star Wars in Roger Christian's Galaxy Built on Hope. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Like, it, that, you know what? Watching this document documentary, A Galaxy Built on Hope, uh, it certainly opened my eyes, like, to all the details that went through in making Star Wars. And you know what? You guys should actually purchase this. This is available on your website, right? Yeah, um, it's on Galaxy Built on Hope. Galaxy Built on Hope. I'm going to put that link down there. And I think <sighs> you've also signed a couple of copies too, right? And I think yes. that's... Uh, like how many copies? Is it? It's a limited copy, I've, right? Yeah, I've given the um, people who s do it through there some signed copies. I don't know how they can get it through on oh, right. if you order on the website, but um, yeah, there may be a way to do it. Right, or I'll so sign with people when I see them, whatever. Yeah, I hope I'm getting my signed copy. People send them to me and I sign them. So it, it, it this was like you've seen. David West Reynolds was the head of literature at Lucasfilm, and he. Um, worked on New Hope, mm -hmm. met me there, grabbed me and said, you have to write a book because none of what's in here has ever been told. None of the makings of, the official ones, have even mentioned my name or John Barry. George 
was so busy making his movie and doing the script and fighting everything. I mean, the crew right. hated him as right. much as us. So he, he didn't know. He just knows I gave him a blaster. I gave him sets done. I gave him this. He had no idea what we were doing apart from walking around on the stage or whatever when we were building things. But really, it was such a relentless task for him because when we started, there was only $4 million. That was it for the whole film. And, mm -hmm. and Star Wars basically is an art department film because there's no stars apart from Sir Alec Guinness in it, maybe Peter Cushing. But um, we literally had virtually no money. That's why I made the decision to go and get airplane scrap and build all my interior sets out of that and Tatooine. And you see, here's the difference. George Lucas made THX as an independent filmmaker, stuck to his guns, made that film. He understands what it took to make a sci-fi movie with no money. And um, the reason he stuck to his guns is because the studios hated him. They wanted their money back after they saw THX with a movie. Right. And it's a cult classic, you know. Mm -hmm. And he decided with Coppola's backing then to go and move to San Francisco and do what he wanted. Nobody wanted to do Star Wars. Every studio turned it down. Just Alan Ladd said, I want this kid in the studios. I'm backing this kid. Wow. And um, he stuck by that against the board, everybody. Um, so it was a difficult film to make, but that's okay for me. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was doing I, well, what I wanted. I was it, doing it, what it I came loved. Up, it came up pretty well. I must say, and like it's also started a huge franchise, right? But you know, something that actually came to my mind looking at this uh, blaster here, man, I just love holding this, man. This is just like a... Like yeah, this, they're beautiful. This cool. You know, that's oh, wow. what I wanted. I wanted. Look how heavy it is. It is. And it's, um, this is with actors. You know, yeah. immediately Harrison. There's that famous publicity picture of him like a cowboy doing a right. fast draw. Right. That's what I wanted. And every, all, all... every weapon I chose suited the character. I wow. was very careful when I did it. That's again his intuition. What would Chewbacca have? Exactly. Ralph McQuarrie drew him with a with a rifle. Right. I saw the bowcaster with balls on the end and right. I thought, wow, this would be cool. And again, I showed George and he said he changed the script right. to put that in. So again, it's like intuition. Yeah. And when I'm directing a film with yeah. a crew, I always say you've got to get everybody playing the same violin. Right. So because you get one person over here doing, no, I want it like this and right. one like that, and right. then it doesn't meld together. Correct. Yeah. No, so it, fortunately, John Barry, who was a huge, huge help to George Lucas, and I mean, John made the film possible by saying, well, Tatooine, he took him to Tunisia, and there it was. Yeah. All I had to do was dress it. That's amazing, man. Like, you see, everyone, <clears throat> like, you know, like, as I mentioned, the channel is built on, uh, you know, following the dreams. And for me, it was a, a long journey. It's a long, tough journey, but I think... Uh, on our previous discussion, we always mentioned about, you know, just not saying no and just saying I can and just going forward with that, right? Yeah, here's, here's in my book that I oh. first wrote that this is based on. Right. I will read you the last line. Go ahead. Because I chose this book as a mentor. It's not like, look what I did. Right. I have written this chapter because my last words to anyone aspiring to follow their dreams, dreams are truly more pertinent than ever. Do not let anyone tell you you can't. You can. Just have a dogged determination and never, ever give up. That was going to be my third question for you. <laughs> so, and you just answered it for me. That's amazing. You know, thank you for that. That's, that's really, really amazing. I mean, the journey is tough, but I think when you take that first step, just the initial first step, you know, things unfold and come about. Just about, like, just the same way as this, this whole journey of Star Wars and to what it has become now. Um, my, See, just to, for yeah, that, Scott Peck yeah. wrote a book called The Road Less Traveled, I think it's called, back in the 70s. Okay. One of the biggest selling new age kind of how to do it books, self-help. Right. His first line in that book is, the road is tough. And if you don't agree with this, then please don't follow. 
Right. Don't follow on, read this book. Right, wow. If you can accept that the road is tough, then yeah. it is, then, you know. Guys, it, I guess this is on... This is on um, uh, Amazon. Amazon? Yeah, All anywhere right. in the world. It's out. So, um, again, this is what the documentary is entirely based on. And, and what I was saying earlier, Javik West Reynolds got me at the picnic at the ranch. Right. Grabbed me and said... I need to ask questions. And then he said, you've got to write this book. John Barry, the designer, died very young. Les Dilley was, our other member of the art department, was really an art director. That's all. It, it got things made. Right. I was in the creative position with John Barry. And um, so he said, you've got to do it. I had to take two years off and wrote like 650 pages because fortunately I've kept healthy and my memory is very astute from Star Wars. Right. Um, and of course, it makes that you know it was I so could, important to me that everything I remembered. I could really tell because this documentary, guys, like it is detailed. This is like over two hours. It's around two hours and a couple of minutes, it's right? Two hours twenty. Because twenty. Yeah. I wanted to do a special for fans because yeah. they love Blu-rays. They still collect them. They're huge numbers. I think Blu-rays are coming back. Because, they are coming back. Yeah. Because now with streamers, one thing happens suddenly, like Disney will say, "Well, that one's not." getting any takes on it and then they take it and off it's gone so yeah. you don't have it anymore yeah and there's no making offs anymore except for like ilm now which is brilliant what they've done right um the making of ilm right um is fantastic i had to do the same thing because i'm the only one as i said to tell these stories there isn't anyone else so i'm so grateful to be here <laughs> this but you know what guys i've watched this movie I remember I'm going to watch it again because at that time I was pretty young, but that's something that stuck. It like it was ingrained in my memory, and now here I am, sitting with the awesome Roger Christian. Uh, Roger, I want to ask you something. What do you think of M Class's uh, <clears throat> tunes and songs and the journey that he's on? What do you think yeah, about that? Yeah, you're doing exactly the right thing, and I encourage everyone to go to your site, pick them up, listen to them because you're doing original work. You're not selling out. You're doing it all yourself. You're writing, learning and stuff. And there's some great stuff on there. So just go there and listen and help because, you know, in the end, what Justin Bieber did it. I mean, that's what he did. And that's how everyone started to listen. Right. I'm not saying you're Justin Bieber. You yeah, do a very <laughs> different music. And yeah. yours I like because it's very spiritually based. Right. And that's, in the end, there's a reason why Star Wars has become the biggest franchise of films in the globe and it will never be seen again because of the opportunity at the time for it to be made that won't occur again um, but the reason is Joseph Campbell mentored George how to put keys into it that all mythology has because it's Hero with a Thousand Faces that's Joseph right. Campbell's book right. it's all the same story George connected to those into this he followed the exact path of a hero's journey and see there's a <clears throat> very interesting um the company that did the toys that made us are now doing the movies that made us right and they they have Marsha lucas talking for the first time because right. she was deeply involved on star wars and even i didn't know this but she ended up editing Star Wars because she edits for um, Scorsese, Taxi Driver and she's a oh, brilliant wow. editor Wow! George was so affected by negativity Brian Brian um, De Palma they were all telling him you can't have this force in there, no one's going to see that in America, take all that out the force stuff and he did, he cut it all out, Marsha and the editor she worked with put it all back when right. it was too late for George to take it out mm -hmm. again. Can you imagine Star Wars without that core? And what George's genius was to make a Saturday morning picture that everyone could relate to, heroes and villains, it's swashbuckling cavaliers and cowboys, it's all rolled into one. Right. But within that, he managed to get a... Um, 
a kind of spirituality into it that could be accepted by everybody. You know, and it's no, it, it's, you know, I'm very clear about it. He didn't create a religion. He's very much against that. But he did create something that's actually more accessible and more followed than any of the modern religions at the moment, Star right. Wars is, and the Force, because a lot of it is based on Buddhism. You know, the, the mm -hmm. Jedi Knights are mindful. There's a lot of Buddhist sayings in there. And Buddhism doesn't lecture you. Buddhism tells stories that relate right. to things, and that's what George did. And this is why it has resonated with so many people. Yeah. And this is why it's connecting like these many people to come and get so gravitated to that. Because that a part of them, that a part of their spiritual being, even though they're unaware of it, it's kind of like opening up because of things like this. Yeah. And that's also big, that's the trying to con kind of concept that I'm trying to do as well in regards to music is to spread the consciousness yes. and awareness on yeah. oneself. Yeah. Roger, is there anything else you would like to say to your fans out there? Yeah, I, well, I always say may the force be with you because the force is inside you. So um, I'm actually writing a, a book, self-help book right now, which is called The Force Within. And I'm trying to show the keys that I had experience of and I feel myself lucky that I went through with healers who came into my life who broke oh, wow. barriers for me wow. and got me up to where um, I'm learning every day. You learn from your children. If you have kids, learn from them. I am with my son now and uh, my elder too. You learn every day from them because we're born with a pure essence of who we are and it gets lost and you have to try to find that kids have it they don't have to pretend it's there they're inside. like enlightened beings themselves right yeah of course until they they are. they're conditioned by yeah their circumstance and, and you, environment yeah and we all build personas to survive into this world because it's incredibly negative and, and my big beef with the modern age because i'm never look back i don't i'm not looking at the past i always look forwards i was there you know promoting doing digital when everyone was against it with george we tried out digital cameras when we were, i was directing the second unit on phantom menace i'm always going forwards i was the first one here right. going into digital editing right um what i was talking about what i fear about the new revolution that's going on, which is the internet revolution, it's given a voice to negatives. And unfortunately, anyone, the brain in most people kind of is attracted to the negative, negative. Yep. not the positive. Exactly. So now they've all got a voice and they're all negative going on, doing on. You know, I always say to these people, just go and try and make a movie. You know, now Spielberg's the worst director on the planet, George Lucas, they're all coming out. Go and make a movie and see what it's like. There's nothing wrong with successful movies that go out and make billions of dollars, and there's nothing wrong with art movies that we... You know, I grew up with Bergman, Tarkovsky, Kurosawa, Pasolini. This was my education in London. Right. Even then, when I got my first job as T-boy on Oliver, the art, I came from art school with hair down here and, and talking about movies and spiritual stuff. I was told, stop that, get your hair cut, get a suit, get a tie, knuckle down and stop watching all that rubbish and, and get onto the drawing board and make your way up to become a designer when you're so old and it's all gone out of you. Right. John Barry was young, I was young. And we've fought that to follow our own path, you know. So I was lucky that somehow, I guess being born stubborn, and I didn't see my father till I was two because he was away fighting in Java and growing up after the war. The war, yeah. I, I grew up in a miserable grey era of time where rationing and everything, and there was no joy anywhere. So I read books, I read, you know, all of the science fiction classics I could get my hands on, King Arthur, Ivanhoe, everything. I lived in that world. Was was the, like, you know, since you grew up in the, the, the time of war, right? You've seen all the environment, it was kind of grungy and, you know... Yeah. Was that something that resonated in Star Wars? Like, because of, like, you know, like, in the, like, different scenes, like, you know, the... 
the um, <clears throat> parts where you know you you needed to do a set where it was like distorted or like you know or something like was that something that actually came out you know uh, yeah i talk about this because i had to analyze a lot in the documentary right. yeah and yeah because um i wouldn't remember it but where i was born croydon the um, British intelligence fooled the Nazis into thinking when they're flying bombs, they put enough gas in them, petrol, that it would drop right on centre London, exactly time. Oh, I see. They fooled them. They thought they were dropping them on central London. They were dropping on Croydon. That's oh, where geez. I was born. Oh, man. 169 or 170 dropped right around us. I found the school that got bombed and blew the front of our house in when I was six months old. Oh, wow. So I think, you know, yeah, and the streets were just bombed out. So if I did hypnosis, I'm sure, and went way Something back would and regression, out. it would all come out because I was very attracted to it, yeah. Yeah. It's that kind of look. So there we are. That's amazing. Roger, <laughs> I hope you guys got a whole bunch of stuff here. You know what? Pick this up. Pick this up. I'm telling you, I watched it, and I couldn't stop watching it. I actually watched it twice. And I think each time I watched it, I learned something new. Pick it up. The link is down below. And Roger, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much for sharing this bad boy. Look at that. Oh, yeah. The safety's on, right? You said it's yeah, not yeah, Okay. I yeah, just, yeah, well, just want to make sure. It's a mock-up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, this has been such an amazing experience. And I'm so glad to have pursued my very own journey. Yeah, keep to, doing it. Thank you. And to actually come here in the presence of you. Had I not pursued my journey, guys, I'll not be sitting with this awesome man. Well, it's all about mentoring. <laughs> yes. Luke Skywalker would never have done and become the amazing character that he was without Obi-Wan Kenobi and right. Yoda. They right. They the mentors. Right. I had to find my own and I found them, but, you know, I have mentors, big Buddhists and people like that. You have to find a mentor if you can so i think i found mine his <laughs> name is joey c <laughs> yeah so he is a good mentor man and yeah, through him i met it. you you know and yeah. many other beautiful people amazing people yeah they come into your life <clears throat> at the right because time if you're open they'll come yeah that's I the lesson that's the lesson i hope you guys enjoyed this vlog roger thank you once again not at all you're the best <laughs> keep up your own journey and keep doing your thing i'm excited to see what other projects are going to be coming up soon from you and it's going to be great all right guys i hope you enjoy take care take care what color nose